Discovery of Neil Madhav. You? Namorani explained three histories. <coughs> three times? Three different histories. But where is he? What is he? So, and anyone 
થાય છે પ્લેન અબાઉટ લીલ માધવ એન્ડ ડિસ્કવરી ઓફ જગન્નાથ દેવ સમરન એન્ડ વોટ યુ ગુલજી ચમાર જી સજ્જન મહારાજ I want to explain all these things in brief again. So first of all, of all discovery about Neel Madhav. You know something? There are three very interesting histories about Lord Jagannath and Sri Gurudev has asked me to speak about the history of Nila Madhava. At the time there was a king named Indra Dumna. He lived in Satya Yuga during the first half of Brahma's day after the creation. Once his wife was named Gundicha. One time, a Brahmin came from far away and he spoke about the beauty and the glories of a deity named Nila Madhava. This deity had four arms like Narayan. It was very beautiful. Srila Gurudev says, not as beautiful as Krishna. <laughs> Hearing about this deity and how he could give uh, liberation and so many wonderful things, Indra Dumna had a great desire to bring this deity and to see this deity. So he had asked all his, his advisors, including the son of his priest, Vijapati, to find out where this Nila Madhava was residing and so that he could have the darshan of Nila Madhava. After several months of looking, all of his advisors, generals, kings had come back empty-handed. No one had found. But the, the, son, the son of the priest, the Japati, had not returned. So now he was very worried. Meanwhile, the Japati had gone to the eastern side of the coast of India. And he came to one beautiful village, very beautiful village, near a beautiful mountain. There are many flowers there, it's very lovely. And he thought, this is a very interesting place, I shall stay here and see what I can find out. He came to one house, uh, the head priest of that village, his name was Vishvasu. He had, Vishvasu, he had a daughter named very beautiful daughter named Lalita. She said, my father is away right now, but I will take care of you as an honored guest. And she gave him a place to sit, some nice water to drink. Later on, the father came home, and Vijapati noticed that the father had a very uh, sweet fragrance most beautiful fragrance, unlike anything he'd ever smelled before. Uh, <clears throat> so he was a little suspicious where this priest has come from. And he decided to stay in that village. Over time, in time, some attraction and attachment became for, uh, between Lalita and Vijapati, and although he's married, Vedic culture, he could have more than one wife. He approached the father and he agreed that my daughter can become your wife. 
after some more time, he noticed also that the father was quite frequently going and coming back from some secret place and always coming back smelling very fragrant, beautiful garland, flowers, things like this. So he, one day, after his relationship with deepened with his wife, he said, I want you to please tell me, you're my wife, we're like one body, where is your father going? And she said, you know, I, I cannot tell, my father has told me that it must be secret and I should never tell anyone, but I am your husband. You should not speak like that, we are like one body. Well, I will tell you if you will keep it secret, yes. He is going to see a deity and he is worshipping a deity there. So, then, he asked, which deity? Again, she was somewhat reluctant to answer, but she said, Nila Madhava. And now Vidyavati was very happy, because now he would be able to fulfill the king's desire. He had located the secret place of Nila Madhava, but still, he would have to go find the deity now. And that would be difficult. So he said, please, you ask your father, if I may accompany him, when he goes to do the worship of the deity, that I would like to see the deity. So she went and she asked her father, and he said, oh no, this is not possible. And she says, then I will commit suicide. So when the daughter is threatening the father like that, what can the father do? His heart is breaking. So he says, all right, I will take him, but he must be blindfolded. I will not reveal where it is. I will take him to the deity, but he will not know how to get there. So when the time came to go, uh, the bullet cart was there with all the items to take up for the worship. Uh, Lalita slipped some mustard seeds uh, in her husband's pocket and said, if you drop these seeds on the way as you go, then when the rainy season comes in a few weeks or so, they will produce a bright yellow flower, mustard seed, a bright yellow flower, and then you will see the trail up to where my father takes you. So, even the father, he went a zigzag course to try to confuse the blindfolded Vijapati, but still, he dropped the mustard seed. So when he, they got to the mountain, and he took off the blindfold, and they were in a very beautiful place with a beautiful lake, and Vishvabhasu said, I will now go and make arrangements for the puja, you wait here. While, he's, while Vijapati was standing there watching, one crow was sleeping in a mango tree, its branch was hanging over this lake. So at that time, the crow was suffering from lie, you know this is one of the five persistent obstacles in bhakti, he was sleeping and he fell into the water and drowned. And at that moment, his four-handed form, Garuda came and escorted the four-handed form soul of that crow to Vaikuntha. And Vidyapati was given eyes to see all this. So he was astonished and amazed. He said, oh, I should immediately go up in the tree and jump in the lake and drown myself so that I can go immediately to my Vaikuntha. This is a wonderful place. Huh? The entrance to the kingdom of God. So when he climbed up in the tree in the branch, he heard a voice. He said, no, no, you should not commit suicide. I have many services that I want to render you to render to me. And first and foremost, you must go and uh, inform Indraduna Maharaj so that he may come and have my darshan. So, I may need some help with some of the details at this point. So, did you have any
already heard from the aerial voice not to commit suicide. That aerial voice, who is Neil Madhava or Lord Jagannath himself, said, I have so many plans for this world, and you're an instrument in those plans. You'll do very wonderful things, so it's not time for you to go to Vaikuntha yet. Everything will happen in due course. Just then, Viswavasu returned from his getting paraphernalia for worship, and he said, come on, come on, come to the temple. So Vidyapati and Viswavasu went into the temple, and finally, at long last, after so many months, Vidyapati saw the beautiful four-armed blue deity, Neil Madhav, and he felt great ecstasy and happiness. Number one, from seeing the deity himself, and also now he could go back and tell the king. So, arti was done and so much puja was performed. And then again, Viswavasu blindfolded Vidyapati, put him on the bullock cart, and they went back to his home in a very zigzag way, so that Vidyapati wouldn't be able to detect the trail by sounds or anything. Then, as they were going back home, Viswavasu heard an aerial voice, also from Neil Mato, that you have served me for so many years, and I was so happy by your service, but now I want to go to the palace of King Indraduna and be served by him. So you should make such arrangements. On hearing this aerial voice, Viswavasu became terrified and he thought, I can't bear the separation from the Armada. I have to do something so that he'll stay with me. So as soon as they got to his house, he locked up Vidyapati, his son-in-law, in a room and practically jailed him in his house. So just as Vidyapati very affectionately spoke to his wife to convince her of the other situations, now he convinced her very affectionately that she should help him to escape so that he could return to King Indraduna, which she did. And after a very, very long walk back to Avantipur, the um, residence of King Indraduna, Vidyapati reported that he had indeed seen the deity. So King Indraduna was so pleased, he said, I'm going to take my family, all my ministers, citizens, all to see the deity. So they came back to that place, about a um, hundred miles, I think, from Puri, and he wanted to go see the village, and he wanted to go see the mustard seeds, so that he could get up the hill, but by the arrangement of the Lord, there was no temple in sight because it was covered by sand. There was no mustard seed because it was covered by sand. And there was no village because it was covered by sand. So the king was so heartbroken, he was determined to fast until death if he had to because he could not see the deity. Then again there was an aerial voice from Lord Jagannath or Neil Madhav, and he told the king, don't be despondent. I'll give you my darshan, but it won't be in the form of Neil Madhav. I'm going to come at the place of Banki Mohan, which is now called Chakratirtha, and I'll come in as a log, a big red log, and there will be signs of chakra, of disc, and lotus, and club, and kancha, all over the log. And then deities will be made of me, of Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadra, and Sudarshan Chakra. But now, I'm going to send Lord Brahma, and he will take you to have my personal darshan in Vaikuntha. So Lord Brahma arrived and took him to Vaikuntha, where he saw moving near Madhava, speaking with his associates, and he was so overjoyed. And then Neil Madhav gave him the same message again, that I won't come to earth and give you darshan in this form, 
but I'll come in the four features. So he went back, the deputy went back with Brahma down to earth. But although they were only there in Vaikuntha for a few moments, on earth time it was millions of years. So he went back to his kingdom, but everything had changed. The whole world had changed. So the temple that he had arranged to be built before he went to Vaikuntha was still there. But there was a new king who claimed proprietorship over that temple, which had become dilapidated and the new king repaired it. So fortunately, King Indraduna's wife, Gunnicha, was still there, still alive. And Vidyapati went to that new king and he said, this is my temple that I'm making for Niyamada. So the new king didn't believe him. So Brahma was also a witness that yes, this king, Indraduna, is the proprietor. And there was one bird named Kakabhusundi who was also there during the time of Lord Ramchandra's pastimes. And he also witnessed that it was Indraduna who was the proprietor. So now, Introduction is again the proprietor of the temple, and he called for all the carpenters in Orissa. He said, anyone who can carve these deities, I'll give a big reward. So as soon as any of the carpenters' jewel, um, tools touched the deity, immediately the tools broke, because the wood was so hard. Then one, um, one carpenter said, I can do it. My name is Maharana and I can carve those deities, but you have to give me 21 days and without any disturbance, and then the deities will be manifested. So the king was very happy, and he waited for 14 days. And after 14 days, his wife, Kunnicha, said, now there hasn't been any sound for 14 days, maybe, and he hasn't had anything to eat, maybe he died. If he dies, then it's our fault and we have the guilt of killing a brahmana. So please open the door right now and let's see what's happening. So the king said, no, I made a promise. But she was so insistent that he opened the door forcibly. And when he opened the door, there's a couple of different versions that Gurudev tells. One, that the carpenter was there and he said, oh, why have you disturbed me in the middle? Now I could not complete the deities. And then he disappeared. And the other version, and they could have happened differently in different yugas, is that the carpenter just wasn't there at all, and just the four deities were there. So the king understood then, oh my goodness, this Maharana was not an ordinary person. He was Jagannath himself. And first he thought he had committed a, a sin to open the door, but his minister told him, no, there's some mystery here, and it's all right. And then when he opened the door, and he saw the deities, and the carpenter was gone, then he understood everything, and he was Jagannath himself. So then there was an aerial voice again from Lord Jagannath, who instructed him exactly how to perform the Rathayatra ceremony. That it will be 10 days, there will be Rathayatra to the Gurnicha temple, and the Gunditya temple was named after King Indraduna's wife Gunditya because she was such a prominent instrument in the manifesting of Lord Jagannath. You'll have Snani Yatra, you'll have Chandan Yatra, and I want the descendants of this Vavasu, Sabara, to be my cooks during that time, and the descendant, that is Lalita's descendants, the wife of Vidyapati, who is the son of the priest of King Indraduna, and I want your Brahmin, the Brahmin wife of, of Vidyapati to be the priest, the Pujaris, during Rathi Yatra, and I won't accept service from anybody else. So the king agreed, and, but he said, but I want to make one request from you. So Jagna said, what is that? He said, I don't want any descendants. I don't want any children or descendants. Jagannath asked why, he said, because they will claim that this is my property, this is my temple, and they will take the pranami. So Jagannath agreed, and Jagannath smiled also, and why he smiled is revealed in the second history, 
which I guess we'll hear by the rest of the group. Feed him even. Mm? 
They did, even though bread was so full of butter and milk and yogurt, they did not give him anything to eat. So he had to go door to door stealing just to stay alive. His, his mother was so cruel that even she used to take a rope and tie him up with a rope sometimes. And not only that, but they used to make him work very hard. They made him go out in the early morning in the blazing sun and graze cows in the forest. And then he would come back in the evening. Mm -hmm. And not only that, they did not even give him any shoes to wear, even though the forest is full of thorns and brambles. So, Padmavati, the wife of Kamsa, she was mother of Kamsa. She was oh, criticizing Brijabhasis in so many ways. She said, look, uh, what we can do is we can calculate how much money they spent on Krishna. So we don't have to calculate how much butter they gave because they did not give him any. But we can find out how much butter he stole from the neighbors and reimburse them. And we can calculate how many days he went cow grazing and how much work he did. And all of these things. And we will reimburse the bridge buses twice over. We'll give them twice the amount of money that we owe them for Krishna leaving and coming here. So the revisions a single for me for Rohini. But do not pay one penny for Rohini because Rohini is in their party. <laughs> so then, uh, Rohini said, oh, you, you are say, speaking like this because you don't know what love and affection is. Because you are not so chaste. Hmm? Why is she not so chaste? Because actually, she is not the mother of Kansa. When she was a young lady, she was playing on the bank of Jamuna. And one demon called Drumil came there. And by Drumil, oh, Kansa had been born. So he was not the son of... He is the mother, but Ugrasen is not the father of Kansa. So then, Rahini Maya, she, she called all the, all the queens that came together in a secret place and she told Subhadra, Krishna's sister, to be on the door and make sure that Krishna and Baldev don't come. Because if Krishna and Baldev will come in and hear the glories of Vrindavan, they may be attacked by so much separation, they will leave at once. So then, Subhadra, she stayed on the door and Rohima, she began to explain the glories of Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. How, oh, Madhya Shoda, she had so much love for, for Krishna, for his own benefit. Mm -hmm. She used to, she could bind him with a rope. Madhya, how Madhya Shoda used to uh, feed him and uh, take care of him in so many ways. How he was so attached to her. And also she described the love of Nanda Baba. She described how Krishna used to go cow grazing with his friends and how they would play together in so many ways and perform beautiful pastimes. And even she described the love of the gopis of Vrindavan by which Krishna was completely controlled and he admitted that he was unable to repay them. So when Rahini Maya was speaking in this way, Krishna and Baldev, they were in the Sudama assembly house. In that assembly house, they were seated among so many members of the royal family and they were having a meeting to decide and solve all the political problems and whatever situations would come up in their kingdom. But what is Krishna's nature? Naham tishtami vai kunte yogi shiva. Krishna has said, I don't reside in Vaikuntha and I don't live in the hearts of the yogis who meditate on me. But rather, yata ganti madhvakta tatta tishtami narad. Hey narad, wherever my devotees are singing my glories, telling my sweet Leela Kata of Vrindavan, I reside there. So this is Krishna's nature. If anyone is telling the sweet Hari Kata of Vrindavan with melting heart and tears flowing, then Krishna can check himself. And once he will come and appear in that place. So Krishna made some excuse. And along with Balde, they left the Sudama assembly house and went running very quickly to that place where Rohini Maya was telling the Braj Leela Kata. So when they arrived there, Subhadra Devi, she checked us out, you can't go inside. I have order from Rahimaya that I have to stop you from coming in. But anyway, from outside, Krishna and Baldev and Subhadra, they could hear what Rahimaya was telling. So hearing the glorious and sweet pastimes of Vrindavan, then Krishna, Baldev and Subhadra, all three, they began to melt in ecstasy. Their arms and legs went inside and their eyes became very, very big. And they were stunned. Even now you can see that Jagannath Baldev Subhadra, they're completely stunned in ecstasy. 
uh, unable to move. Uh, they became like statues or like wood, uh, it seems. But this is only because they're overwhelmed with a deep ecstasy of separation from Vrindavan. So then, Rohini Maya, as she was telling these sweet pastimes, she became overwhelmed with transcendental ecstatic love. And her voice was choked, and she could not speak. And she was just weeping and weeping. She could not tell anything more. So at that time, when the, the Harikata stopped, then gradually, um, Krishna, Bhagavan, and Subhadra, their ecstatic mood began to die down, and their arms and legs came out again. And now Rishi, he arrived there. So when now Rishi arrived, then Krishna, he was very, very grateful to Narad. Why? Because it was because of Narad that these glories of Braj had been spoken in this world. And because of Narad that Krishna had the chance to hear this sweet Harikata. So he wanted to give a benediction to Narad Rishi. So Narad Rishi, he took the benediction from Krishna. Oh Krishna, I pray to you for this, that in this form that I have seen you in today, this ecstatic form, feeling separation from the residents of Vrindavan, you will be visible to all the people of this world. That you should appear in this world, in the, this world, in that very form. And you should be called Patik Pavan, the saver of the fallen. Because in this form, you will give your darshan to everyone. And you will distribute your Mahaprasadam to everyone. And by this, you will attract everyone to your lotus feet. So that they may awake a very deep greed, a substantial greed, to attain your eternal service in Goloka Vrindavan. So Krishna said the past two, so be it, and gave his benediction. And therefore, we are all sitting here today, having darshan of Jagannath Dev, and by the mercy of Jagannath Dev, by the mercy of Radha and Krishna, and their pure devotees, we have a chance to hear the glories of Vrindavan, so that in our hearts, a greed may sprout to one day attain the service of Radha and Krishna, eternally there. Narthen requested him to be situated in Nilatam Samutra Nila in Jagannath. And Srila Gurudev, he is explaining that now he also asked for the benediction that in these three transcendental ecstatic forms you should remain forever at Nilachal, Jagannath Puri, on the bank of the ocean in Orissa. And from there, give mercy to everyone. Thank you.
So no one announced. Only few Brajavasis is too old. They left over there. All came to Kurukshetra. Other hand, Krishna came with his all inhabitants of Dharaka, all his queens, Mother Devaki Devi, Vasudev Maharaj, Rahini Maya, and others. So when Brajavasis all Kauravas, all Kauravas, Vishma Pitamaha, Guru Dhanacharya, Kripacharya, Dhrujadhan and their hundred brothers all, Maharaj battle not take place yet at the time. All Rishi, all King all over India, they gather together. So Krishna was discussing something with them. When he heard that Nandavala, Jasudamaya, Brajavasi is coming closer, Krishna kept, kept them, kept them left behind and ran away towards Vajabhasi. Sing Jasadamaya and Nanda Baba. Krishna began to eat. And Krishna took seat in the lap of Mother Yasoda and Balada took seat in the lap of Father Nanda Baba. Sing Mother Yasoda. Krishna became so overwhelmed. He remember all his childhood pastimes. How Mother Yasoda nourished him, protect him. How his love, how her love was so ecstatic love. And Mother Yasoda was so old. Whenever Krishna went for went away from Braj, he she never cooked, never eat, became very skinny. But when Krishna took seat on his on her lap, Krishna began to eat. Breast milk coming down automatically like a fountain, non-stop. Because non but Jasudamaya is the embodiment of Patsala Ras. She was weeping so bitterly. Seeing this, <coughs> Devakidevi thought, oh, maybe Krishna will not be here anymore. So much love with Mother Jasuda. Maybe Mother Jasuda will took him away from here. So somehow or other, I have to present Krishna and Jasuda in one way that both can understand that Krishna is my son, not Jasuda's son. Devakidevi thought, Oh, Jasode, oh, you are so fortunate. I thank you so much. Oh, you protect my child like the people of the high. Whenever anything will come, I will drop down automatically. None can, keep, none can mentor anybody's son like yourself. Oh, I am better to you, grateful to you. Then you start in other way that Christian Jasode must listen his dialogue, her dialogue. Rahini Maya thought, oh, why Devaki Devi is doing all these nonsense things? Devaki Devi is telling, but neither Jasoda nor Krishna is listening anything to from Devaki Devi. Rahini Maya thought, oh Devaki, Kunti Devi has come, and Adha has come. Please come, and I have to welcome them. If you not go there, what do you think? Like this way, Rahini Maya took Devaki from there. Other hand, the Braj Gopis, the Krishna's beloved, they could not tolerate Krishna's separation. Just like Buddha has given an example so many times, that if you have any burden on your head, you have to go some distance. You are carrying that, carrying that, but when you are almost near to doorway, if you get checked, then very hard to check yourself, like your heart will break, because that there's a limit of persons. So, Dohini Maya thought, oh, now somehow other have to separate Jasura Maya from Krishna, have to give chance to go peace, otherwise they will die. So, Mother Dohini Maya, by tricks, he took Baladev Prabhu and Jasura from there. Jasura did herself, because Jasura knew if I not give. So Jasudamaya realized that if I not give chance to gopis, they may die at once. So Mother Jasoda, taking Varadapru and Nanda Baba, went to other place. In the meantime, gopis came and meet with Krishna. And so Kaviraj Goswami has explained in his Chaitanya Chaitanya very details about this. So, 
महाप्रभु टेकिंग दिस मूड ही डिस्कवर्ड द न्यू मूड ऑफ कार फेस्टिवल एस बिफोर प्रायर टू चैतन्य महाप्रभु देयर वाज कार फेस्टिवल बट नॉट लाइक दिस मूड नाउ इट इज आफ्टर डिस्कवर्ड बाय चैतन्य महाप्रभु कृष्ण तो ओ गोपीस आई एम ऑलवेज विद यू सो इफ यू मेरे टाइम अपॉन मी देन यू कैन सी ऑलवेज आई एम विद यू व्हाई यू आर सॉरी Gopis told, "We are not yogis. How we can meditate? Better we can give this instruction to yogis, like Brahma and Brahma and others. They can meditate upon you. We want to forget your lotus feet. We want to engage ourselves in household job, but we could not do so. And you are telling us to meditate upon you. We want to forget, and you ask to meditate upon you. Not possible for us. This is not what we don't know." I always used to go there, and I used to play with you all. And again, come back to Jodhpur. Do you think that this won't be not at all? Because without you all, how I can survive my life? Lose all of you, my life and soul. And Radhika is my jiban and jiban. Radhika is my life of life. So I could not give any one of you. So I am always with you. So then, what is it that Radhika told? If you please, and then you can come with us to Braj. Then, Baba Tomar full no pibamani. Then we understand your full mercy. How Krishna came to Braj? Chori ko pir monarathe monmothe monmothe nam thare madan mohan. Krishna is madan mohan. In this world, all living entity be allowed by two feet, but Krishna is madan mohan. He can be a little bit stupid also. How come? Chori ko pir monarathe. He can ride on the chariot of made by Gopi's mind. If this way, then Krishna can be a little bit stupid. So Gopi is pulled him to Vrindavan. How? Putting the chariot made by mind. So Sri Mukti Chandra Mahaprabhu discovered this that Gunjaya Mandir is. Personification of Vrindavan and Nila Chaudham is personification of Daraka or Guru Chhatra. So Mahaprabhu, it is all associates. Full Chaitanya Kars, Jagannath Dev, Prince Rajendran Sam Sundar, in their mood to Gundi Chamundi, and he lived there about eight nine days, and he made excuse to Lakshmi like Sattva or Rukmini and others. Oh, I became sick. I want to go for change. So by chief them this way, he went to Vrindavan to play with Gopi. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has discovered this mood. Under guidance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, up to now a day, in our guidance of our Guru Bhagwa, this mood is going on. So I pray in the lotus feet of Guru Dev and all Krishna Vas and Guru Bhagwa, please bestow their countless mercy. Now I may be one day be able and qualified, be in their guidance. How the relish of our festival? I am the least under their guidance. Hare Krishna. Panchaya Prabhupada Rupa Shiva Sindhu Bhaiya Ko Sati Kanta Bhaiya Ko Ho Hare Ho Ho Hare Ho These are the main reasons or main things or causes causes that Dhrana Kalde Bhatra are in Jagannath Puri and Great Temple, and each year our festival. Before this, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, prior to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there was every year card festival, but lightly. King with his own uh, members. And officers, they used to do all these things. And elephant, they used to put the cow on the cow. But the Chetan Mahaprabhu changed everything. <coughs> and he added new this thought: how gopis carried Krishna from Guru Chetra on their manoratha, chariot. Great body, hard. 
No, it has been told in the Srimad Bhagavatam also, so many places. Dhanya Prajas Priya Purukrama Chitta Jana Krishna always liked to be seated in the heart of Krishna. Gopi. So Gopi took Krishna from there, from Kurishatra, pulling with their own hands, or in their heart, Krishna. And Krishna was controlled and he came from the chariot to Vrindavan. This is the main causes of God festival and Jagan Nam Balde Shubhadra in that form. But before this we should, we have discussed about also. You can bring Jagan Nam, but it should be totally clean, washed. If temple is not washed and not clear, not clean, and not to see the food, then Jagannath cannot come. You know, Uttama Bhakti, Anna Vilashita Sunya, Jnana Karma Vidyana Bhutam, Anukulena Krishna Nushilanam Bhakti Uttam. There shall be no any desire except serving Krishna. No worldly desire, no sense gratification should be there, and no apara, no anath, there should be, and also it will be not covered with jam and karma, yoga, tapas, and other things. Always serving Krishna to please Krishna, only to please Krishna. Kantan in the guidance of Vaishnava, then the bhakti is otherwise now. And Krishna can <coughs> ride on this bhakti chariot which is in the heart of Radhika and Gopi. <coughs> this God is there on which Krishna can be carried and he can be easily found. So this is the main substance of the uh, career festivals. So I was telling that first the temple should be clean. What is the part of that? Clean for you. Oh, before that one kitchen. Oh. Bole Srindavan Bihari Lal Ki Jai Nal Bole Desh Vatra Jeev Ki Jai Nal Puri Ki Jai Atta Japra Ki Jai Vitae Gorja Nade Jai Sachi Nanda Nal Jai Gaura Hari Jai Sachi Nanda
Thank <laughs> you.